That makes it unstable. And when the phosphate is coming off from creatine, phosphocreatine, with the help of the enzyme creatine kinase, which you could have also heard about when you're trying to check whether somebody has a myocardial infarction, there's an enzyme, an isoenzyme called CKMB. This is the enzyme that breaks down phosphocreatine. So if somebody has a myocardial infarction in about four hours, if you check the activity of this enzyme in the blood, you would be able to see that the activity would increase. On the other hand, creatinine, because it goes into the blood and gets filtered in the kidney, normally, if the kidney is functioning well, the concentration of serum creatinine will be maintained around normal, maybe somewhere 63 micromoles per liter to 84, let's say 120 micromoles per liter. 84, it usually based on a different method which has less interference. 120 with the method that has interference. You discover that this will be the concentration of creatinine. The kidney will keep on filtering out that creatinine. However, if somebody has a kidney problem, it will start struggling to filter the creatinine. Therefore, creatinine builds up in the blood, and when you measure the concentration of creatinine, if somebody has, a, has kidney failure, you find that it will be very high. As high as maybe even 500 or 350. Usually, it could even be double the maximum, double 120, which would be like 240 going up. You see, this person is actually having some form of kidney dysfunction. So, that creatinine you measure is a derivative of phosphocreatine. ATP is made out of phosphocreatine. As the phosphate comes off from phosphocreatine, it attaches to ADP and forms ATP. Therefore, phosphocreatine can be a source of the plus 7.3 kilocalories. Which other molecules would have high energy? There are molecules referred to as Carboxylic, phosphoric, and hydride. Examples of these molecules would include 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate, which will look something like this. When you look at the structure of 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate, this is something you met in glycolysis, right? Reaction 6, right? There's 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. This molecule is a high energy molecule. This is why this reaction in glycolysis is referred to as a substrate level phosphorylation. Because oxidation of the substrate, the sorority 3 phosphate, is linked to production of a high energy molecule. Right? This molecule is a high energy molecule. The next reaction to this, when the phosphate comes off to form 3 phosphoglycerate, ATP is produced. Why? You have a high energy molecule which generates the plus 7.3 kilocalories to produce ATP. Other molecules could be 2 in this family, is going to be 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate. Yes, the same one which you had met in your hemoglobin, the one that was leading to inhibition of oxygen carrying capacity, boy effects and things like that. In hemoglobin, 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate is also a high energy molecule. Not familiar, right? We'll explain why. Now, which other molecules will have high energy? Five. Theoesters. Theoesters will be molecules that will have high energy. When you see a theoester, such as acetyl-CoA, 
acetal com E, saxinal com E, these molecules will have high energy because of the core A that is there. As the core A is coming off, it will give off energy. For you to put back a core A, you need to look for energy from someone. So theoesters have high energy. The last one I probably want to talk about is a molecule which could be familiar again, but it's the molecule with the highest energy in the body. These molecules are referred to as enophosphates. Example, phosphoenal pyruvate. When you look at the structure of phosphoenal pyruvate, which is the, the substrate for the last reaction in glycolysis, you notice that phosphoenal pyruvate will actually have An inner group be attached to a phosphate there. If you have an inner group and a phosphate attached there, it makes the molecule highly unstable. Because of this, this molecule has high energy. In fact, the reason why this molecule has the highest energy is this. You see, in glycolysis, phosphoenal pyruvate is converted to pyruvate. And I must tell you that, in essence, the pyruvate that is produced is going to be produced in two forms. Then there is the inner form of pyruvate. That's the inner form. It has an inner group there. And then there's the keto form of pyruvate. Why is this important? This is important because what happens is that pyruvate will be converted in the inner form and quickly tautomerized or isomerized into the keto form. Now, when you look at the difference in energy, so there will be ADP getting that phosphate to produce ATP. When you look at the structures of the two, phosphoenal pyruvate has a phosphate to it and it's unstable. When you look at the structure of, this one doesn't have that phosphate there. This is the inner form. When you look at the structure of pyruvate in the inner form, it doesn't have a phosphate, right? So these two in structure are already having a huge difference in energy. To make things worse, the product goes on to isomerize. And I told you that when a molecule isomerizes, it becomes more stable. So the more predominant form of pyruvate is the keto form. Now, you would notice that since this was a molecule with very high energy, it's converted to a molecule with very low energy, such that the energy difference becomes so huge. It's so huge that the difference, the net change in free energy of this reaction, when phosphoenal pyruvate is converted to pyruvate, it's about minus 61.9 kilojoules per mole. It's a molecule with the highest energy. And I know that you were taught that in gluconeogenesis, where you are trying to reproduce phosphoenal pyruvate, you can't reverse this reaction because of the huge change in free energy. This doesn't make sense. I can give you a simple analogy. Let's say you're on top of the roof. When you're on top of the roof, it's easy for you to get to the ground. All you have to do is walk to the edge, close your eyes, jump, and you are on the ground 
with your legs broken, right? Easy, right? Now, however athletic you can be, you just can't jump up to get back to the roof. Do you see what I mean? So if we are looking at such a reaction, to get this one back is like jumping up back to the roof because of the huge difference in the energy. Do you get the sense? In fact, probably one of the easiest ways of getting back to the roof is by using what? Stairs, right? And when you come to gluconeogenesis, you will discover that to produce phosphoenyl pyruvate, this reaction uses something like stairs. Pyruvate is going to be converted to something else. It enters the mitochondria, converted to something else. It's going to be converted to oxaloacetate. Then the oxaloacetate will be converted to mallet. Mallet will move out of the mitochondria into the cytosol and be converted back to oxaloacetate. Then the oxaloacetate is the one that will be converted back to phosphoenyl pyruvate. More like stairs. See what I mean? to go beyond the energy barrier of this reaction. Now, before I bore you to death, I want to give you the answer to why, even though there are so many high energy molecules, you only knew about ATP. The reason is simple. Guys, enzymes in the body, which you and I already know, are highly specific. They are specific for ATP as their source of energy. Not these other high energy molecules. Therefore, most of the enzymes would use ATP as their source of energy rather than using these other high energy molecules. To help you understand what this looks like, Think of it in terms of ATP being more like money. The way money works. Money can buy anything that you like, most of the time. Not sleep, I know that one, you're talking about money can buy what, but not that one. Money can buy you shoes, can buy you a dress, can buy you a car, pay somebody to do your work, do all those things. It can pay your school fees, right? can do so many things. However, if you are caught by the bazaar that they want you to pay your school fees, then you say, all right, fine, I'll be on the way. You bring your Mercedes Benz worth 200,000, your school fees is three is 30,000, and then you say, hey, here's a Mercedes Benz. I'm paying for my school fees. What would the bazaar tell you? What did they tell you? Sell the car, bring the money. Is that clear? Therefore, chemical reactions in the body, when high energy molecules such as phosphoenyl pyruvate tries to generate, to provide them with energy, they'll tell them, sell and bring ATP. Is that clear? Thank you, that ends my class.